All right. Hello. Welcome back. Uh, I'm going to start trying to embed my uh, my face. Uh, my mom always said I had a face for radio. Never quite understood what that meant. Um, here you go. So the other day, the unit that you were supposed to complete and turn in was called uh, 1.4 testing hypotheses. Previous unit 1.3 was about um, creating or developing hypothesis. Remember, hypothesis, it's not an educated guess. Yes, it's educated, but I don't like the word guess. It's an educated explanation to what you've observed. How about that? That seems much better than a guess. Okay, now I want you to look down here and you would I would highlight what I've highlighted. Um, you don't have to, but I think these are the key points. Um, a good scientist tries to disprove their hypothesis. And, and that's okay, because even when you dis disprove a hypothesis, yes, it'll be discarded, meaning it, it's, it's thrown out, but you have learned something. You've learned something. Even when it's wrong, you still learn something, okay? Um, when you test a hypothesis, Depending on what it is, sometimes you're going to have different tools like microscopes and telescopes and other equipment in the science lab. And when you do that, you are going to actually get uh, data, okay? And data are simply the numbers. It's the numbers of, of, of whatever you, you've gotten while you're conducting this, this experiment. After you have the data, you analyze it and try to interpret it and then come to some sort of conclusion to see if it proves or disproves your hypothesis. Now, the previous unit, they were talking about the fact that atmospheric carbon dioxide has increased over the past five decades. That's 50 years. And they came up with two possible hypotheses to explain this fact, that carbon dioxide has increased over the past five decades. So hypothesis one says, Atmospheric CO2 has increased over the past five decades because the amount of carbon dioxide gas released by volcanoes has increased. We know with volcanic eruptions, uh, they expel a, a large amount of carbon dioxide gas. To test this hypothesis that it's due to the release of uh, uh, due to volcanic activity, uh, we need to see if the amount of carbon dioxide gas released by volcanoes over the past decades has increased. There's two possible scenarios for why it could increase. Number one, which makes the most obvious sense, is that there's, over those 50 years, there's been more volcanic eruptions, right? More eruptions, more CO2 expelled into the atmosphere. Another possibility would be, no, the number of Volcanic eruptions hasn't increased. However, the amount of CO2 gas expelled in each of those eruptions has increased. Okay, so looking at the research, okay, you go back through it and we find out that uh, on average, there's 50 to 70 eruptions that occur every year. And when we look over that 50 year period, those five decades, it's remained, the number of eruptions has remained constant. Constant means the same. So it hasn't increased, it hasn't decreased, it's stayed the same. Okay, then, then when we look at other scientific papers, we find out that the actual amount of gas, the CO2, in terms of what was expelled, um, or the gas composition of that, those eruptions over the 50 years, it hasn't changed. So it's not like each eruption has, has all of a sudden increased the amount of CO2 that was released. They, we find that with the literature, with the data, that is not true, okay? The gases are the same. So what that tells us is that hypothesis one's false, so this is wrong. So volcanic activity is not able to account for the rise in CO2, okay? So it's not, so the increase in CO2 levels, not due to more eruptions or more gas um, 
spewed for each eruption. Uh, remember, science is falsifiable, so that's okay. That's a good thing. Therefore, we can throw this out. Discard means throw out. Hypothesis two, if you recall, was this. Once again, we started off the same way. We state the fat, the increase in CO2 gas, and now we're saying maybe is it due to the increasing amount of fossil fuels that are being burned? If you recall, fossil fuels are... Uh, the energy sources that we, we've come to rely on. They call them fossil fuels because we know millions of years ago they formed. They formed from the remains of living things, whether it was plant or animal. And it, it, it depends on uh, the, how much it's compressed, the heat, uh, the type of material. Um, but a fossil fuel example would be like coal, um, peat, um, Gas, petroleum, natural gas, diesel, um, all of those are, um, you know, any oil product is a fossil fuel. So they say this is the hypothesis. There's an increase in CO2 due to the increase in the amount of fossil fuels being burned. Okay. To test this, we need to see if the amount of carbon dioxide released by fossil fuels over the past several decades has increased. Now, if you look at this below, you can see they go all the way back along the x-axis, 1750, so prior to the, the, the birth of our country. And along the y-axis, it's the metric tons of carbon that's expelled into the uh, atmosphere. And you can see along this chart the different forms, solids, liquids, gases, they've, they've given it all here. Every single one of these is seeing a rise, an increase, okay? Now, if you look, this is about the time of the Industrial Revolution where we burned lots of coal, right? Lots of coal. Um, and so this, you can see, this is when we started to probably start impacting the carbon dioxide levels in our atmosphere. Therefore, and, and what the, the hypothesis, remember, was the last 50 years. So the last 50 years is probably about here, roughly. Um, so it's partially true, if that makes any sense. Um, because remember, it says that the, the rise is due to the amount that have been over the past several decades. Okay? Um, so have fossil fuels added an increasing amount of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution? Absolutely true. But uh, we know it hasn't just occurred over the last 50 years. It's actually been longer. So what they'll say is that it's partially true. Okay, it's partially true. Um, so that is kind of how you would come about with hypothesis and, and determining using past research and data uh, if your hypothesis is correct. Uh, in summary, you can see science, we said it is falsifiable, incorrect hypothesis. You still learn a lot, but it's thrown out. And just like we said, the levels of CO2 in the atmosphere are increasing. We know fossil fuel burnings increase. Therefore, the rise in fossil fuel burning is increasing the amount of CO2. So it's sort of a, a cause and an effect. Okay. Um, so that's it for the unit. Hopefully, that makes a little bit of sense to you. Um, if you get a chance, you can watch Mythbusters, which is one of my uh, favorite shows. And they talk about why certain Mentos will cause the eruption and why others don't. And they have a hypothesis as to why it occurs and then why it doesn't. So you may want to take a look at that. All right. Thanks so much. And uh, good luck with this unit. Remember, once you're done, that you have to do the practice. And I know it's hard to see. It's behind my – can I move this at all? Oh, I can move this. Holy cow, look, I look, learn something new every time. Then you're going to click on practice. Do the practice, remember, and you get 10 correct. Once you have 10 correct, then you turn it in. There's a button up here that you click turn in. And then you got to go back to classroom and mark it as done and complete it and submit it. And then uh, I'll get I'll get it. All right, and then I can post it from Google Classroom to uh, Teacheries.
All right. So hopefully uh, that makes sense to you. Thank you. Uh, we'll talk later.